Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today, we are introducing a new author to the Pantheon, Grace Mann Brown, who wrote a really terrific book called Think Right for Health and Success. And we're going to read a chapter, particularly on just thinking right, that's so profound. It talks about thinking and really emphasizes thinking correctly. It has some affirmations at the end. I thought it would fit perfectly with what we've been working on so far. Grace Brown was a New Thought author from Denver, Colorado, who wrote under a pen name Loan for many books. And she was terrific. She wrote for Fulfillment Magazine back in the day. And each of the books I've read have been pretty profound. There's so many great New Thought authors. It's always fun to find a new one. Think right by Grace Mann Brown. The brightest of sunny days, the bluest of warm skies, as a brilliant sun looked down upon a group of men, gathered about a wondrous man, with glorious love in his tender eyes, as he bent above them to impress his words upon their hearts. As you think in your hearts, so are you, said he. As you think, as you think in your hearts, And while hundreds of years have passed into infinite memories since that sweet sunny day, although hundreds of teachers have said again, as you think in your heart, so are you. The day has not yet arrived when men know that it is true and that they truly become whatever they think in their hearts. Each soul has his own place in God's great realm. Each child has his own place in God's earth home, and it is not an accidental home nor an accidental place. No, indeed, it is the place which he creates for himself, the home wherein his own thought has placed him. When the man thinks according to the right angle of his earth position, and when he holds steady that position in the right angle of his part of life, he attracts to himself all that is good in universal life. And the good of life is all that is worth, while in our being and in our living, health, success, opulence, and happiness on all planes. Verily, there are no terrible life errors when the man thinks within his own right angle of life. And never was a truer word spoken to the souls of men than as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. To think the thought which appeals to you is to do the thing which is right for you. To live the life which belongs to you means life's truth to you. We measure ourselves by the quality of our thought, by the strength of our desire, by the purity of our love, and by the accuracy of our selection. Then let us know that we become what we think, that we do as we desire, that we have what we love and that we manifest God's life as we select. Therefore, let us qualify in truth. Let us desire to do good. Let us love God's treasures, and let us select health on all planes, that we may measure ourselves in His name. The human being is created in the image and likeness of God. That statement alone, if truly realized and really accepted, would solve the human problem because it would adjust the man in perfect mathematical relation to the divine part of himself and so prove his unity with God. It would free you and me from untold confusion and anguish by relating us to our own responsibility and proving to us most positively that we have no right to be sick, we have no right to be poor, we have no right to be sorrowful and mightier than all. It would free us from the agony of separation by the present form of death because the glorious God of whom we are a part, in whom we live and move and have our being, cannot die. And we are created in the image and likeness of the imperishable and ever-living God. The individual being made in the image of God has the divine attribute of will and the consequent power of selection. Also, the universe is in process and the individual is in process. The individual is the microcosm of the universe, and the universe is not yet perfect. And in the journey toward ultimate completeness, there are many experiences. 
When the man forgets his responsibility to and in and with himself, he also forgets his relation to God and the allness of God, so he misdirects his divine power of being good and being complete, which results in being healthy and happy. And in the misdirection of his goodness, he causes an inaccuracy of action, which results in a lack of good. And all lack of good causes pain on some plane of expression, whether it be of the flesh or of the supply or some other condition. All untruth to ourselves is unfaith toward God. And in our falsity to ourselves and our faithlessness to God and to each other, we cause more and more of separation, more and more of misunderstanding until it seems to our human conception that the light of truth has gone out and that we are submerged in the anguish of unbelief. Every disease of the flesh is caused by some process of mental action which relates the thinker to the lack or to the reverse action of some divine force. And the healing of that form of disease must come from the plane of its expression. Fear thoughts attract to the thinker anything upon which he centers his attention. The thing you fear will come upon you. And being the opposite pole of faith, faith is the force to use in dissolving the confusion generated by fear. In like manner, diseases caused by hate and condemnation and all repelling forces must be dissolved by the applied force of its opposite pole of love in creative action with faith, which render all destructive operation void. And it is so in all phases and forms of disease. They are healed by the same force in constructive action which generated them in destructive action. Faith is a divine force, an attribute of God, as it were. It is an actual substance which proves its actualness whenever you formulate it in your mind and utilize your thought force in bringing it into action. Fear is the reverse activity of faith. They too are the same magnetic force in different rates of vibration. Faith being the force in the rapid action of good which vibrates cooperatively and coherently and constructively with God, and fear being the same force in a negative vibration which disconnects and disrupts and works destructively because of its lack of cooperation with good. You can only attract and assimilate thought forces which are of your own quality, and you can only attract as much of the universal thought energy as you have the capacity to assimilate. Otherwise, you might attract by and through your own fear enough of destructive energy to disintegrate your flesh form at once. In all healing work, the process must be on the plane of its own action. If you are using the material and medical process, you will use material remedies. If you are using the mental process, you will use mind forces. And if your process is purely spiritual, you will use spiritual forces. But whatever process you use, your medium for action and consequent expression will be the mind, because you cannot think outside of mind. You cannot comprehend or live coherently apart from mind. It is the medium of all present consciousness, of being, and of action. Should you realize that you have devitalized and distorted your portion of God's life and are manifesting your life in pain or in poverty or grief, you may also realize that you have the divine right and the consequent power to reconstruct yourself and so balance yourself in your own accurate position in the universe. Opulent, balanced life action relates us to God, the all good, and it is our privilege, yours and mine, to attract and to express the opulence of God's great goodness on any and all planes of our being. And in order to do so, we will learn to think coherently and form our own point of view, our own angle concerning the things which relate to the mastery and the reconstruction of ourselves and our conditions. Too long has the individual forgotten his individuality and his unity with God. Too long has he been a servant and a slave of opinion, and a thousand times too long has he lived his life from the vision of others and accepted disease and poverty in the distorted belief that it was the will of God, and he has actually worshipped a God who he believed had unjustly scourged and whom he fully expected to cast him into an after-death hell for pure revenge after he had held him for years in a present-day hell upon this fair earth home. Glory be 
to the oncoming, onrushing force of the mighty truth of God's allness. The present day hell is dissolving fast, and the light of heaven is already enfolding the children of the ever living and all powerful, and greater than all else, the ever loving God. Every atom of substance, whether expressed or unexpressed, is spirit substance, and mind is the medium which, according to its vibratory force, and the quality of the intention back of that force produces all effect and all manifestation from and of the great primal substance and its active cause in mind. Thought is mind in action, therefore. Thought is the conscious formulated energy emanating from mind which is responsible for all human as well as all universal manifestation. And as it is the human being we are studying today, we will analyze a few ideas concerning human thought. Now this human being, created in the image and likeness of God, has in himself all of the universal possibility and all the divine attributes of the infinite intelligence, and he will externalize all of Godness and master himself by knowing himself, and the man will know himself by desiring to know himself. You and I have arrived at the point of our human progress where we desire to know ourselves. And first and foremost, we are discovering that in order to know ourselves, we must learn to think. That is, we must use our minds in coherent action. Otherwise, our part of the infinite mind may use us incoherently because it is our responsibility as we are part of the universal expression, to use our portion of life and intelligence according to our capacity, which means according to the best we know, for responsibility is merely responding to truth with the best of our human ability, with the intention to think coherently, to use our minds, or rather our part of the infinite mind, according to our own desire and inspiration, we commence to realize something of our relation to the universe. In other words, the relation of the human to the divine and of the infinite to the finite. And then we perceive that thought is our material and the part of it which we select is our capital for our entire life action. Also, that we may do what we will to do with our own capital. In the studying of ourselves, we naturally analyze ourselves, and in the analysis, we recognize our power. And in that recognition, our capacity increases, and we find ourselves steadily and surely becoming masters of our thought. And in that vital mastery, we are uplifting ourselves and consequently, the entire race. All accomplishment comes first by attracting the thought energy with discrimination. Second, by assimilating it in love. Third, by wisely expending it. It rests entirely with you and me what quality of thought energy we will entertain. We naturally attract thoughts which are of our own quality, but we need not retain any form of the universal energy with which we have finished and for which we have no use. The man becomes what his thoughts represent. If they are constructively relating and attaching him to the life current, his force is everlasting and his existence is eternal. If on the contrary his thoughts are destructive and therefore disintegrating, his soul has not the necessary cooperation for its expression and dissolution on some plane, usually of the flesh form results. Men may have as much as they will use and no more of the grand universal current of thought energy. And using means giving according to the best of our capacity in order that the capacity may strengthen to receive more and more of the opulence of the infinite love and wisdom. Every thought which is attracted and assimilated and sent out by the individual carries with it a suggestion and whoever and whatever is of its quality is on the line of that suggestion. Possibly some of you may remember that the epidemic of La Grippe was introduced into America by a cablegram which was published in the newspapers and even when not published epidemics of constructive conditions as well as destructive have manifested themselves through mental suggestion. When the mind is not trained 
and the thinker is destructive in his consciousness, that is, when he is afraid or angry or otherwise confused. The thought has less power and is more easily dissolved, but the power of a thought formulated by a trained mind and directed with the accuracy which belongs to the intelligent master of a trained mind cannot be overestimated. Not because of its present power, but because being on an orderly and a constructive basis it endures for always, which is the reason that one constructive thinker is more powerful than thousands of destructive ones. Verily, the gates of hell cannot prevail against him. Were it not so, the planet itself would dissolve in the confusion of its myriads of destructive thinkers, who, even now, in the supposedly enlightened time, are shrieking for each other's blood, and are groveling and grafting and selling their souls for each other's possessions. Thoughts which are based upon falsity, such as fear and hate and condemnation, are not enduring. They perish by the weight of their own delusion, and they are impotent in their falsity. Because the life current is pure and undying truth, and no thing and no force can long endure against its living accuracy. While truth in its entirety never changes, and its principles are immune, each mind perceives it from a different angle, and consequently each vision varies. Few people, however, have the courage to be sufficiently true to themselves to live from their own angle of vision. They have not yet become individual, and so when a man formulates a broader conception of truth than his fellow men, it places him a trifle apart, and others look askance and declare that such an intrusion of ideas beyond their own may mean change and better be suppressed. So for many ages has it been with the form of truth which deals with the spiritual healing of the flesh form through the medium of the mind. There have always been, as there are now, those who have preferred to endure the anguish of flesh dissolution through the disease process rather than to accept a truth by and through an apparent mystery. And as the human creature is free, it is his privilege to suffer and to die if he wants that experience. It is his divine right to select his part of the great spirit substance and equally his divine right to manipulate it and direct it in response to his own desire. Now, we have decreed, you and I, that we will use our freedom by freeing ourselves, and we cannot be free with our bodies in the bondage of pain and in harmony. So we are going to forgive and to forget all our past suffering and discord, and we shall stop our habit of thinking at random and allow other people's thoughts to control us. Instead, we shall balance our own minds and so regulate our own thought energy. Therein lies the first step toward becoming spiritual in our flesh forms, and of purifying every atom of them, and healing every inequality that they may become whole in the consciousness of the wholeness or holiness of infinite life. The first conscious effort in the direction of mind mastery is the process of intelligently centering the thought force with formulated intention. This process is oft times called concentration or centering the thought. And in order to center the thought, one must give it his undivided attention. The triangle of concentration is attention, contemplation, and meditation. Attention steadies the mind and attracts the chosen thought. Contemplation fixes and establishes the thought in the mind and adjusts it to the present condition and requirement. Contemplation is upon the plane of reason. It argues and balances and adjusts. It analyzes and regulates and decides. Then, having formulated a decision through its own balancing force, meditation naturally follows, and the student enters upon a plane of conscious and cosmic understanding which relates him to knowledge. The sort of knowledge which we are claiming today is that which gives us the ability to control our physical bodies and to relate them to perfect health, and the same quality of knowledge enables us to control our environment and our bank account because the interpenetrating force of the finer forces of nature, the more spiritual force, as it were, brings balance in the all good to all which it may contact. These finer forces of nature, such as faith and love and hope and courage, 
operate upon the finite being through the medium of finite mind. So we will realize that our human or finite mind is a measured portion of the divine or infinite mind. In fact, that it is the infinite mind expressing itself in infinite form, wherein it is measured and limited or extended according to our capacity, in more accurate wording, according to our conception of ourselves. Thus, the human mind has the same attributes and the same privileges as the infinite mind, because it is a portion of that mind, and its difference in power is only in the degree of its intentive force. In order to relate our finite minds to a comprehension of infinite mind, let us place our thought upon the primal substance of spirit, and then let us know that every atom in the universe is an intelligent atom, and that whatever its present form, it is fundamentally and primarily pure spirit substance. Following that idea, let us adjust our mind action, which is our thought in direct line with the thought or the mind action of the infinite intelligence, with the awareness of our unity with it, or in other words, with the consciousness that we are one and a part of that intelligence in all of its activity, and that it is therefore our responsibility to do our part in the mental control and manipulation of the formless spirit substance in bringing it into the manifestation through orderly energy of orderly form. Nothing gives us a firmer grasp upon our own power than this clear vision of the infinite unity of universal life, and consequently of our own part in and with it. Therein we see our greatness, because we see the greatness of God, and all that lives and moves and is of Him. Supposedly, we are not using our thought force intelligently. That is, suppose we are, through our own ignorance, which is merely ignoring the law of our own life, not doing our part in the constructive and orderly adjustment of the universal manifestation, and are therefore expressing destruction and disease. Shall we despair and grieve and feel that life here is over for us? No. Indeed, unless we desire to leave the planet by such a destructive route, there is always the opportunity of a mighty recall, a recall of repentance, which re completely reverses the forces of destruction and merges their activity in the constructive operation of God, wherein we may, even with our finite consciousness, reconstruct and readjust and heal all that is in disorder and confused suffering by and through our reconnection with God's mighty love and supreme wisdom. We do not make statements which cannot be definitely explained and positively proven, and we have said and are proving it factual that there is a method and process for every accomplishment on every plane of life concerning which we have the capacity to formulate thought. Also, it is true that no demand can be made upon us which we have not made possible by our desire, and the process may always be discovered through the understanding of the desire. Many times it appears that we are not quite equal to the thing we have assumed, that our burden is greater than we, and that we shall be submerged under its great weight. It is not true. The fact that we assumed it proves positively that we desired it, and that it remains with us is a definite assurance that its quality is our own or it could not remain. When we grow greater than our problem, stronger than our burden, through the greatness of our wisdom and the strength of our love, all of confusion will utterly dissolve, because in the dynamic action of love and wisdom, in cooperation, no thing destructive can possibly endure. Thinking constructively means thinking always the uplifting thought concerning yourself and everybody else. It means realizing the love nature and the love quality of every living creature. It means knowing that everything manifest is of God, whether or not its immediate expression is God-like. Thinking constructively is not thinking spasmodically, with a love thought one moment and a fear thought the next, with a thought of hope and divine intention today and a fall into despair tomorrow. That process of mind action is most confusing because being uncertain, the result is unexpected and unequal to the mental atmospheric conditions and conflict is sure to follow. In the recognition and the realization of the good, and only the good, in all of intelligent action, 
You have the appreciation and respect of yourself, which is a most potent healing force. Indeed, very much of disease is caused by regret and self-condemnation. You also have a spiritual stimulant for all of your life's intention. And really, it matters very little what are the opinions of other people concerning you so long as you have your own love and appreciation for yourself. But that is absolutely essential if you would be true to yourself. And if you intend to accomplish your part toward the completeness of the planet you have selected for your present abiding place. And one vital part of your work upon this earth home is that you adjust your physical flesh form in complete and balanced expression here and now. You may have been told that you are controlled by the planets. Indeed, some systems of philosophy are bounded north, east, south, and west by the belief in zodiacal limitations. They evidently do not perceive that the creature that is made in the image of God is far greater than any such, or indeed any limitation, because the finite mind being a measured portion of the infinite mind is of universal or cosmic quality and can dominate and sweep infinite and cosmic realms instead of being ruled by the conditions of one little solar system. Naturally, so long as we make it our abiding place, we are more or less influenced by the conditions of this solar system, just as we are influenced by the climatic conditions of the earth while we are breathing its atmosphere. When we know the truth of a fact or a condition, not only believe it, but actually know it, we also know how to meet it and, if necessary, how to overcome it. When it is cold to the point of discomfort, we are sufficiently wise to create heat. Likewise, we are great enough to ride the waters and to bend their mighty power to our service, also to utilize the forces of the fire and the earth and the air in response to our human desire and intention. Therefore shall we, you and I, allow these finer forces of life to turn upon us and rend us, as it were, when we have within us all that is greater than they and when we can bend them to our intention and utilize them for our ever-increasing strength and glory. Verily, nothing can intrude upon us, and nothing can glorify us but ourselves. We have decreed that we shall manifest health and opulence on each and every plane of our being, so we will immediately commence to think opulently. We will think concerning the fullness in consciousness that there is such mighty abundance in the universe that it is more than equal for all the life forms within it, more than all the human claim which can possibly be made upon it. There is always the supply to meet every demand, and if we strengthen our demand, naturally the supply strengthens and increases in abundance. Abundance of health, such marvelous abundance, freedom, and fullness in and of every requirement conceivable to the human mind. We glory in the treasures in our Father's house, in our home. We glory in the many mansions in our special mansion, and we claim our birthright of health and of prosperity, of beauty, and of joy. Do you think any sort of poverty of the body or the mind or the purse can long exist in an atmosphere created by such a vitalized dynamic thought as that? Hold fast to the idea of your own greatness. It is such a marvelous tonic and cling with the faith of eternity to God's greatness that no lesser thought may come between you and your faith in yourself. You will find the mantrams below of value in flesh healing. Their cadence is such that they interpenetrate with dynamic accuracy. Memorize them. Commit them to consciousness and you will perceive their effect when you need the surcharge of a positive reconstructive energy. There are several here, given because different conditions may demand a different tone, and there are many conditions and many tones. And remember always, and always, whatever the need, whatever the response, there is only good, for God is all, and there is nothing else beside. The light of God's love shineth forever. Its radiance is as the encircling glory of a mighty sun which dissolves the night shadows and reveals the oncoming day. Behold, I place myself within its rising glow and I breathe its flaming energy in and through every atom 
of my flesh form. I am a shine with the light of truth. I am a flame with the glow of health. I am enriched with divine abundance. I am free in the knowledge that I am at one with God. My body is the temple of my soul. It shall be clean. My body is the externalization of my thought. It shall be whole. My body is the manifestation of my intention. It shall be beautiful. For my flesh is to my mind as the clay in the artist's hand. It reflects the genius and the love of me. Come, Lord of life. Let thy glory enfold this, our earth home, that the black night of disease may dissolve from this fair realm, and that sin and death may be no more. Come, gracious Father, and fill the flesh of man with the radiance of thy truth, that life itself may reign supreme, and that mankind may be free to serve thee and only thee. Verily, the fullness of the earth is God, for all goodness is of him. The love of God is the heart of wisdom, and his love and wisdom is knowledge, the all knowledge of being and action, the mighty knowledge which passeth all understanding. Know thyself in him, O man, and knowing thyself thou shalt be whole in his holy name. The light shineth forever. The light dissolves all of darkness. The light reveals, I, it is the presence of the ever-living God, and in his presence there is perfect health and perfect joy. Arise, O man, and declare for thine own path in freedom, that it may lead thee to the light of God's presence, which absolves thee from all pain and all woe. Love is the joy of the world. Love heals the sick and strengthens the weary. Love frees the grief burdened, love endureth forever. Love is all and gives all, yet love, true love, makes no claim. It is greater than all claim and beyond all limitation. In the beginning was God, now is God, in the future shall be God, for he is all and there is not beside. And that is Right Thinking by Grace Brown. The reason I am always drawn to these old New Thought authors, there's a simplicity to it, yet a profound lesson given in understanding how to think and understanding the divine thought, the understanding that fear causes chaos and embracing this fundamental tenet that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I definitely recommend this book think right for health and success for further lessons this is the beginning of it i just thought it's a good summary and powerful idea for anybody out there that is struggling with their thinking i'm trying to do some more episodes on just thinking a lot of people have come to me and said you know i understand everything that you say brian but i can't control my thinking and that's difficult so these have some affirmations that you can do an affirmation is a controlled thought it's a beginning step and understanding the power of your mind to create your reality, understanding that right thought enhances and brings about abundance and good health. It's important to know, but it's one thing to know and it's another thing to actually change the way you think. So understand that every disease of flesh, every experience of lack in your life has by some process of mental action, a cause. And that cause is the key. As we learned from the Psychiana episode, every thought can relate to your reality. How can you control every thought? I do believe that you can't control the initial thought that comes into your mind. So what we're trying to do is not let that thought nest in your mind, to banish it by an understanding of your mind as a portion of the infinite mind and thinking these thoughts. The more you read these kind of materials, it's a reminder of the power of God 
and the all good that comes from this God, to treat God like it's an actual substance, as Grace Brown says, an actual substance which proves its actualness whenever you formulate it in your mind and utilize your thought force in bringing it into action. And fear is the reverse activity of this. They are the same magnetic force in different rates of vibration. And faith is the glue that brings the substance together. This may sound repetitive if you listen to my channel often. And these old New Thought authors would talk about the same things all the time. But there's a reason for that. It's a fundamental truth that you need to completely remind yourself all the time. It may sound repetitive, but you are a mind inside of a larger infinite mind interacting in a multidimensional reality that is made up of a substance. And they started to get at this from a different perspective before there was the internet and television. So they were coming at it from a more accurate and non-distorted understanding than we may have in the present time. That's why these things can resound. It's a reminder, no matter what you're doing, every thought counts, every thought matters. And I really thought the affirmations here are very powerful to correct your line of thinking. If you're in a situation where you're struggling because you're thinking too much and you can't control your thoughts, this is the kind of affirmations that you can do. And it does work. So you say, I am a shine with the light of truth. I am a flame with the glow of health. I am enriched with divine abundance. I am free in the knowledge that I am at one with God. My body is the temple of my soul. It shall be clean. My body is the externalization of my thought. It shall be whole. My body is the manifestation of my intention. It shall be beautiful. For my flesh is to my mind as the clay in the artist's hand. It reflects the genius and the love of me. There's levels to those thoughts. If you're thinking a thought like that, you say, behold, I place myself within its rising glow and I breathe its flaming energy in and through every atom of my flesh form. That is a powerful affirmation to say. It's a reminder Come, Lord of life, let thy glory enfold this, our earth home, that the black night of disease may dissolve from this fair realm, and that sin and death may be no more. Come, gracious Father, and fill the flesh of man with the radiance of thy truth, that life itself may reign supreme, and that mankind may be free to serve thee, and only thee. That is a beautiful sentiment, especially considering what we're going through now. Let thy glory enfold this, our earth home, that the black night of disease may dissolve from this fair realm. And we can say that together. Let thy glory enfold this, our earth home, let the black night of disease dissolve from this fair realm. These words are powerful. They resound over the centuries. This being written hundred years ago. And we can arise and declare our path in freedom from this thought predicament that we're given. As implied in here, it is a hell, and we will be punished to an eternal hell? No, for God is love, and we can see that in the unfoldment of the experience around us, and understanding this loving substance is what we breathe in every second. We are one with it, and as we become one with it, we will glory in the treasures of our Father's house, in our home. We will glory in the many mansions, in the many realities, in our special mansion. And we claim our birthright of health and prosperity, of beauty, and of joy. I hope this resounds with you. It's another beautiful reminder from another voice from the past. All episodes of The Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to the reality revolution.